Hey guys, I'm Shwaib. Let's talk about some of the iOS 18 features before you get it this September. Coming at number five, we have the lock screen. And the thing with the lock screen is that now you can finally customize what shortcuts you want on the lock screen. So it doesn't have to be the flashlight and the camera. You can put a specific application, like for example, ChatGPT, or you can put a specific setting, so anything of your liking. So you can put a shortcut to the remote or the stopwatch, so anything like that. So that is nice that you could get more customization in iOS 18. And speaking of customization, coming at number four, we have home screen customizations. So now you can do a lot more with the home screen, specifically with the icons. You can change the themes of the icons in terms of the color. You can change the mode in terms of light mode or dark mode. So more specifically, you have four different options in terms of how you want to customize the look of the home screen. You have automatic, which will automatically turn it on dark mode at night and then light mode during the day. You also have the option to just set it to dark mode or just set it to light mode. You know, it doesn't matter what time of the day it is. And then there's this new option called tinted, which personally I don't like at all. There isn't any combinations of colors that makes the look nice it just doesn't look good i don't prefer it at all i don't even know why it's an option maybe they can make it better somehow but i don't see a way like this doesn't look good and then there's this other option called large when you click the large basically it takes away the labels of the applications but you see the icons a bit bigger and i could see that being very useful especially on larger phones like the iphone pro max but overall for the home customization i don't like tinted at all i really do like dark mode mode however it really pops the colors of the icons and then like how it makes all the, the background of the icon black I think that's all super neat and it really pops you know I, I just think dark mode looks better than everything else and plus this dark mode is good for your battery it's also good for your eyes too so dark mode I'm going to stick to that tinted however definitely not so I definitely like the new customizations on the home screen you can also finally place your icons wherever you want and that has been on Android for decades you know so it's about time that apple caught up like finally it's been past due so i'm glad apple is getting that and i'm sure you guys are going to do some cool stuff with that moving on coming at number three we have the new control center and the new control center is nice uh, i i actually really like it you can add way more controls than before you can add you know however many controls you want you can also change how big the controls are so you can customize a lot of that as well and you can also have multiple pages of controls so you know you get that more customization overall you know that's been the theme of ios 18 as we have seen so far so that is nice i do really like it i think the overall control center is fluent i think everything is working fairly fairly well uh one thing i do want to note is coming soon so right now it's all just apple shortcuts apple controls so soon they will allow third-party applications to have their own controls enabled there so for example like what if the chick-fil-a app allows allowed you to order your favorite meal by just doing like a click on a control or you can control your garage door or you can turn on the lights in your room stuff like that or like start your car with just quick controls so third-party applications will have that ability coming up but for now in the beta it's just apple stuff but i do see the potential of control panel being a lot more useful with third-party applications enabled Coming at number two, we have the calculator application. And the update to the calculator application in iOS 18 is that well, you have the basic calculator and then you have the scientific calculator. And now the new thing is math notes. And I think math notes, it's way more useful on the iPad rather than the iPhone, but you still have the features. So one thing I do like is that you can handwrite equations, you can handwrite math problems, and it will try for equations, it'll, it will actually graph them, you know, it gives you the option to insert graph. And for other math problems, like, you know, simple addition, multiplication, if you put an addition problem, Put an equal sign it will automatically solve the problem and it will try to like gimmick your handwriting as well and for the most part i think it does a really good job so this is really cool i don't think it's as useful on the iphone but it's super useful on the ipad especially with the apple pencil so i do think this is nice and i have seen this before but now it's like a native thing built in with iphones and ipads as well so that's always a plus so i'm definitely looking forward to this feature 
future getting better and what the final public release will be like because still in beta so definitely looking forward to the calculator updates as well i mean you finally have the calculator app on ipads and i think that's a big update i mean they made a huge deal about this so it's kind of cool to see but it's definitely not the number one feature for me and speaking of the number one feature on iOS 18, and that will have to be the updates to iMessage and mainly RCS support. And that I will talk about in a minute. But first, I want to talk about the little updates to iMessage, like they have text effects, which is nice. There's also send later. And then you can also add any emoji to you know text as a feedback. So the, the text effects are cool. You have like these eight different new ways of expressing your text like there's big, there's small, there's shake, there's nod, there's explode, there's ripple, there's bloom, and then there's jitter. And as you can see, these are just like, you know, cool text effects. I mean, you don't necessarily need them, but I think it makes it more fun texting. So that's nice to have. Another thing is we have the send later option. So before you could do that using shortcuts, but now it's built in to iMessage. There's an option to send later and you can set a time to when you want to send a message. Let's say you want to wish a friend happy birthday exactly at 12 midnight you know and so you can set that as a timed message and you know, send it later so that is kind of nice to have and i do see the usefulness of these features and then we have the add any emoji to text so before you only had like four or five options to react to messages with those icons or those emojis but now you can add any of the icons that are available or any of the emojis that are available on your phone as a reaction to the messages so that's that's also neat but the big update with iMessage is RCS support and especially as an Android user this is really cool that my iPhone buddies can finally get the same quality image that I'm looking at on their end as well because for the longest time Apple did not have this so they're finally supporting it so they are gonna have rich communication service protocol two messages and that should reduce a lot of friction when it comes to you know texting your friends on Android and most carriers should support this so AT&T T-Mobile, Verizon, and Sprint. So it's, it's based on your carrier. They should support RCS communication. So all you have to do is go to settings, apps, messages, and enable RCS messaging in the settings and turn that on. And from there, you'll be good to go. So if I were to send one megabyte image from my Android to my iPhone, I should be able to get, you know, on one megabyte image on the iPhone. And if I were to send a one megabyte image from the iPhone to the Android, I should get the same, you know, quality on the Android as well. So this is a big deal for me there have been times when i send something to a friend and then you know they don't necessarily see it as same quality as like what is this pixelated thing and there have been jokes about this throughout i bet iphone users still make fun of android users for this so soon that won't be a thing and i feel like that is you know that's what 2024 and the future is about leaving behind these barriers and we need a uniform text messaging service which looks beyond these barriers and makes it more universal for all of us to text not just with just simple simple text but also with images videos like we're in 2024 the technology is advanced enough to do all this and we should be able to have those capabilities so it is nice that iMessage is getting these features although it's getting all these features it's still gonna be green bubble text and personally I don't mind at all like yes you're texting an Android person who doesn't have iMessage so you know what's the deal maybe one day Apple will allow iMessage icons to be customized so you can set them to whatever color you want so it won't matter if it's blue or green personally i don't really care but that's just there but i'm super happy that rcs is coming and that's really nice and i'm definitely looking forward to what the official you know public release is going to be if they're going to enable any other supports stuff like that but i mean it will support most of the stuff so images videos tap back feedbacks like google already does that with google messages so i'm definitely excited for that and i'm looking forward to more of stuff like that just like reducing the barriers between android and ios well, that is it, you guys. Let me know what iOS 18 features and updates you're excited about. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that bell icon. As always, have a superb day and thanks for watching.